Welcome back everyone, uh, this is Toa of Tech with another tutorial. This tutorial is brought to you by Tim Finley. Uh, he commented on a video using dynamic topology in Blender uh, asking about retopology. So Tim, this is for you. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk quickly about what is retopology in general before actually getting into how to do it. And retopology is essentially taking a mesh such as this one here. Um, this is a little slow right now because it's kind of high poly for my old computer. But anyway, it's taking a mesh such as such as this. Um, it's a very messy looking mesh. It has no topology, any good topology to it whatsoever. Um, unless you're just going to render it out how it is. Now, if you want to take this into a game engine, for example, or even animate with it, you would need to perform retopology. And what that essentially is, is taking the basic shape of it and putting new polygons over top, more or less, to create an actual topology that you can use for animating this or doing multiple other things, such as UV mapping it in a much, much sim simpler way. So I'm not going to go over how to bake normal maps after retopologizing. That might be another future tutorial. Uh, but I will show you anyway how to start retopologizing in order to have a better looking mesh. So if you have a simple character like this, he doesn't even have arms or legs. I kind of just did this in 15 minutes. Um, what you want to do is, first of all, create a plane. So we're going to do that. And this is method one of um, as many as you can think of, essentially. There's multiple ways you can do retopology. Uh, this here, though, is my personal favorite, and that is using the grease pencil. So what we can do is we can go under the grease pencil, and this is important. Um, when you go under your grease pencil settings while well, in edit mode on this new plane, you want to select surface for stroke placement. This way, when you draw in the viewport with the grease pencil, it will draw on the surface instead of an arbitrary point out in this 3D space. And over on the right side here, under Grease Pencil Layers, we want to select Object. And don't worry about creating new, it will create a new one for you automatically. Um, just from whenever you have to draw on your, your uh, high poly object that you need to retopologize. So going back over to the left under Tools, we have this option called B Surfaces. Now if you don't have B Surfaces, what you want to do is go under User Preferences, Add-ons, and just search for B Surfaces. Uh, it should be default. If not, you probably need to update Blender because I believe this is now a default add-on. Uh, so select B, surf B Surfaces GPL Edition, great add-on, and uh, show you how to use it. So essentially what you want to do is press on the D key, hold it down, and that will put you into draw mode for the grease pencil. And by left clicking, you can draw over top of this and as you can see, it will draw lines that you can use as a topology guide. And essentially, if you've ever used, I believe, ZBrush and 3D Coat even has this, you might be familiar with it. It's essentially drawing on where you want polygons to be placed, and then the computer has an algorithm that takes care of that for you, of creating all the polygons at different points according to the distribution across the surface. It sounds complicated, there's some calculus involved, not going to explain that part though. So for us, so we don't have to do any math, it's really simple, all we do now is click Add Surface. And just like that, it adds in a surface for us. Now it's not 100% perfect, um, we could have probably added in a few more segments just to make it, if, if needed. Uh, for example, if this was a, if you need it to be a low poly mesh for a game, like it's just a background character or something, you probably, this is probably okay. Uh, but if this is something you want to see up close in, in an animation or something, you want to make it higher resolution. So you can just click Control R. I believe it's Command R on a Mac. And place it where you wish to have it in between different segments. And that's just doing a loop cut. You can do that on any type of mesh. Now, uh, another point to retopology, and this is extremely, extremely helpful. I've used it, I don't know how many times, is snapping, automatic snapping. Now, typically when you want to snap something, as you, um, as you can see, this does snap automatically, but if I hold control, it doesn't. So typically you hold down control in Blender in order to induce snapping, but I have it turned on. 
so as you can see, um, this little magnet here means that snapping is turned on. And then you can type, you can specify the type of snapping. So I have it set to face, so this way it the uh, point or any piece that I wish to snap to the mesh goes to the nearest face. You could also do it to the volume, the edge, vertex, or an increment. Increment is the default one where it just increments how far you move it across the surface. And then you can also choose the snap target, closest, center, median, or active. So for example, if you have a face selected on this, it would snap, snap to active if you had it set to that. Center is just, uh, it finds the average distance between two different points and puts it in the middle, which is the center. And closest is the one I use just because it, it usually works out pretty well. You can always do more fine tuning later. So going on with this, um, all you have to do to use that snapping is just select a point that may be hidden, hit G and it snaps it right to the surface. Extremely helpful. So we can continue using this B surfaces. You might be think some people might think if they're new to Blender, well, that's great if you have a strip that you need to quickly create in polygons, but what about the rest of it? Fairly simple, you select two points and you can just keep on drawing. So for example, drawing two lines off of that point and then creating some, I believe that's horizontal lines to go across them and they are on the surface, so you can just click add surface. And the reason that happens is because we have automatic join. And automatic join is, as the name intends to make you believe, automatically joins the surface for you. Now you may have to play with this stretch value at the bottom here. And the reason being is because automatic join will join it as best as it can, but the algorithm is not 100% perfect. So what you will want to do is just mess around with it until two points line up. For example, here, and here you can see two points are not lined up. So we just slide that up and it snaps right to the surface. And we can add in a few loops here. And just like that, it works. And essentially with this retopology method, you would just keep going on with that until your mesh is completely retopologized. Now that is one method though. Um, a second method is to do, um, this is what I used to do before B surfaces came out and I actually use this still, is using the plane method. So I'm just going to select this and delete it. And the plane method, it, it gives you a lot of control, I'll tell you that. And essentially what it is, is we take a plane and what we're going to do is with snapping enabled, we're going to select where each and every point goes. Now this is really great for if you need absolute control over every single vertex on your mesh. So basically you start out with a, poly a polygon, a plane, and um, you could do it this way where you just extrude it and move each vertex. Uh, my preferred way though is holding down control and left clicking, and that will essentially extrude it out to where you click. Uh, extremely helpful for doing things like this, and then just select this and create a face. And that's another way to do retopology. Essentially, it's the same thing. You just keep going until you get finished. And there is a third way that I do know of. This one I'm not a huge fan of. But what you also can do is, a, uh, I suppose it would be a volumetric approach to retopology. And what do I mean by that? Essentially, what I mean is you're taking an actual 3D volume, such as a cube, and morphing it down for example, by using W and then subdivide smooth and morphing it into the shape of this object. Now, I don't personally like this um, too much. For some people, they enjoy it. I don't know how many of the people out there do. Uh, but for me personally, I've never really gotten to this. But if it works for you, then by all means, please do it. Uh, basically, the best way, best method of retopology is whatever works best for you. If, for example, the B services method you think is absolute trash, there is no reason for you to use it. Uh, essentially, just kind of find what works for you. If essentially, just taking one mesh and covering up another, or even what you could do is, uh, now that I actually remembered something, shrink wrap modifier. Um, 
it's another way. But yeah, essentially just use whatever works for you. Um, essentially though, if you have a, something like a sphere or something, what you can do is go under the, I believe it's the form, yes, shrink wrap. You can set the target, which does not have a name. I believe it's just cube. And you can also set a vertex group to set it to a specific uh, vertex group. Anyway, uh, let me explain this a little better, sorry. So what I'm doing here is I took a 3D volume, which was a subdivided smooth cube, and applied a shrink wrap modifier to it. And what a shrink wrap modifier does is essentially it's taking that mesh and, like its name implies, essentially shrink wrapping it to another mesh or another object. This is very useful, for example, making clothes on characters as well to make them fit better. So if you have just this kind of blocky looking cloth, 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 yes. Uh, what you can do is apply a shrink wrap modifier so that it closer resembles the silhouette of the character. And what this allows you to do also, let me just move this out of the way, is it gives you a few options. For example, offset. And what this is going to do is essentially offset how much it is from the surface, as its name implies. Um, but essentially, it's what you can see here if you have a right distance to keep from the target, the target being the head mesh, if you could call it that. And you can also use a vertex group to specify an exact place. For example, if you're making a cuff or something, or something, a tube-like shape that you want to conform to a certain character's, um, like say their arm or their leg or something, you can apply it to that certain vertex group so that it doesn't apply to the whole mesh. It just applies to that point where you wish it could, it could be. So that's essentially putting on, say, a shirt or something for a character and pants as well. Apply them to just the piece that you need instead of the entire mesh. And you also have different modes, different nearest vertex, project, which is probably one of the most extensive options, and nearest surface point. Project is probably one of the best ones, though, because it gives you a lot of options. For example, subsurface leveling, uh, the limit of uh, limit the distance used for projection. So essentially, you limit how far it can project and how far it can't. You can choose the axis, the auxiliary target. I'm not too sure what that is. I'll be honest. And you can also call faces, and call faces are essentially just uh, making it so you can't see faces on one side. It's it's a computer graphics term. So you can basically call them from the front, the back, or just turn it off. Essentially, you want to turn it off if you plan on retopologizing the entire mesh with this volumetric approach. Of course, you can also use the shrink wrap modifier doing the polygon method, or even the B surface surface method, as it will just shrink to the surface that you are trying to retopologize. So I'm just going to delete that. So those are essentially, I hope that helps, uh, the three ways that I know of for retopology. And by no means do you have to use each of them individually. Matter of fact, I encourage people to use them together. Um, me personally, I like using the B surface met method with the polygon method as it extremely speeds up the workflow. And uh, actually, there is a thing I forgot to mention for the polygon method, which is, um, the F2 add-on. So what we're going to do is just go into the user preferences and just type in F2. And this this um, is really cool, adds really cool functionality for retopology. And I'm about to show you why. So we're just going to quickly grab this stuff. You know what I'm going to do is other eye because I've been doing that with the other eye that whole tutorial. And essentially this is probably where I get the most use out of this add-on. So say for some reason you didn't select two points and you're like, oh man, now I gotta go back and retry doing all of that by selecting two points. The F2 modifier, or um, sorry, F2 allows you to essentially do is select a single point between two other points where another point could possibly be. It'll make sense in a second. Click F and it creates that face for you. Now there is a a disadvantage to this which is if you're working very fast for example just kind of clicking and clicking and clicking it will mess up uh, essentially because it it creates a point more or less where the mouse cursor is but it's also trying to figure out where that is within the 3d space 
which for computers can be very difficult because 3D space is actually 2D space and it's very, very messy. Uh, what you can also do is say you wanted to close off a loop here, instead of selecting all four, you can just select two, click F and it fills that for you. So the F2 modifier is a very easy way to even model, you can use in modeling, but also a very quick way to help you with your retopology, which it can take a very long time and it does get frustrating at some points uh, but these tips and these kind of methods uh, will hopefully help you doing that kind of stuff. Uh, one tip I heard from Jonathan Williamson from CG Cookie is to not focus too much on one piece. Essentially, zoom out every once in a while to make sure the whole object as a whole is good, is looking okay. Paraphrasing, of course. And also, if you're getting tired of working on one piece, for example, if you're working on a character's hand, because they're very annoying to model, I'll, I'll admit, uh, if you're getting fed up with it, just move on to another piece and come back to it later. There's no need to get everything done all at once unless for some reason you're in a job where you can only retopologize one piece, everyone else does another piece, and so on. But that's strange. So that's essentially um, all there is for retopology. And before I go, I just want to um, show you guys a few things. So my channel, hopefully I'll be doing more videos. I'm not quite sure about the Godot tutorials mainly because they don't seem very popular and more people seem to be enjoying my blender tutorials more than anything and perhaps i'll even do some generalized program tutorials hopefully in c plus plus as that is currently my favorite language also uh follow me on twitter if you'd like i finally have a twitter account and you are free to ask me questions there i'll be happy to answer any of them i'll probably be on here more than i will youtube for answering questions so if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, if you're just wondering about my life or something in general, feel free to ask me pretty much anything. I'll probably answer it. And finally, I want to just promote this guy's channel real quick. I'm sorry if you guys don't like promotions, but uh, my good friend, almost brother, I guess you could say, is like uh, Jundramo. I hope I'm not butchering your name, is starting up a gaming channel. Yes, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, so he does a lot of videos. On gaming obviously he had more before but I think he took some of them off so as you can see he plays the forest he has a CSGO Tuesday so every Tuesday uploads a video of CSGO pretty great uh, he's playing Dead Space and Portal uh, he's probably gonna have a lot more games coming out too so I would highly recommend subscribing to him hopefully some of you do uh, yeah so that's all I got for now thanks for watching everyone and see you in the next one